right guys the dams definitely appear to be breaking this is indian point reactor shut down after leak so this indian point reactor i've talked about it before in past videos it sits on the hudson river um, and is of concern because there have been so many um, safety concerns um, raised about that particular power plant so one of indian point's two nuclear reactors was shut down friday this report was published on september the 10th by the way six days ago so uh, it was shut down after a leak was discovered um, in a backup cooling system unit 3 was shut down friday after a plant operator noticed a small amount of dry boron in the reactor's safety injection system according to neil sheehan a spokesman for the nuclear regulatory commission boron is a white powder formed when boric acid which is used to control reactivity in a nuclear reactor dries its presence is an indication that there might have been a leak Based on the amount of dry boron found, the leak is believed to be small. However, because this problem could affect the operability of safety injection pumps, plant operators determined a shutdown to conduct necessary or, or to conduct repairs was necessary. Energy officials contacted the NRC, again they're involved, as always with any nuclear thing, after plant operators discovered what they determined to be a minor leak, which occurred in a boron injection tank housed inside Unit 3. The plant was subsequently shut down so workers could investigate the issue and plan for repairs. Water from the tank, called a boron injection tank, was contained inside the building and there was no challenge to safety nor any release of radiation. The NRC's resident inspectors will monitor repairs before the reactor is returned to service. The shutdown was performed without any problems. The leak occurred in the safety injection system which supplies water to the reactor in case of an actual leak in the reactor's cooling system. So Unit 3 is not yet back online, and uh, they plan to put it online soon. So in March, Indian Point's other reactor, Unit 2, was shut down for several weeks while workers addressed a small leak of boric acid in the reactor's pressure vessel head. Unit 2 continued generating power after Unit 3 was shut down on Friday. Unit 3 is slated to, have, uh, to be shut down permanently in 2021 or 2021. Uh, while Unit 2 will power down in 2020. So this is an aging nuclear reactor due to be, or aging nuclear plant with aging nuclear reactors which are due to be shut down in 2020 and 2021. Um, this year, uh, in March and in September, just on the 10th, they had to shut down both Unit 2 and Unit 3 uh, over concerns of leaks. Now, that's very concerning. Uh, obviously, they're saying there was no you know, contamination, no leaks into the atmosphere or anything like that. Um, but still, considering they've had many, many safety concerns prior to this, and they're kind of going out of business anyway, so, you know, if you wanted to do something with a nuclear reactor, or involving a nuclear power plant, using one that's due to shut down in 2020 or 2021, um, you know, that, that way you kind of don't lose a whole power plant. You've already got one that's going out, going out so... You can take it out in style, I guess, if that's one way of looking at it. And then on September the 12th, the uh, day after September the 11th, Indian Point Sirens, uh, Indian Point tested its nuclear sirens, or its, you know, warning sirens. The Buchakan nuclear power plant, which is slated to close in 2021, will conduct a, this, I guess, would be Unit 2 or Unit 3, uh, will conduct a regularly, regular quarterly test of its siren system between 6 and 6.30 p.m., the facility sirens will sound at full volume for about four minutes in Westchester, Rockland, Putnam and Orange Counties, according to uh, Entergy, the Louisiana-based company that owns Indian Point. Obviously, this is a they're saying that this is a drill or they put on these sirens um, at least once a year or every year they do it. Um, but still, considering the shutdown on September the 10th of Unit 3, and then two days later, on September the 12th, doing the sirens. Yeah, kind of makes me think maybe there's something more planned for that one. So I'm going to keep an eye on that one. As well as the, um, I forgot the name of it now. Just, just so, uh, I've got it. It's just gone from my head. Anyway, the previous video, the previous PowerPoint that I talked about. Sorry. Looking at the map, we have Indian Point uh, nuclear power plant just down here, and I've just followed the Hudson River up to 
um, one of its dams that's upstream. Um, considering I'm still following that kind of scenario pattern, something happens at a dam, water flows downstream, affects the power plant that goes into nuclear meltdown, obviously affects a large amount of the surrounding area. The dam that's located upstream from Indian Point is called Hudson River Lock and Dam, or it goes by the name Federal Dam, or Troy. And obviously Troy is interesting to me. Um, what is left of Hurricane Florence will be approaching New York coming up to around like the 18th to the 20th, looking around that timeline. Um, that's around the same time that Helen or Helene, the hurricane will be approaching the UK and uh, wondering if, you know, we're referring to the Helen of, Helen of Troy from Greek mythology, which is obviously a connection to the Trojan War in which a city was lost, Troy. And, um, you know, it's possible that that could relate to either New York or London or both. Obviously, they're all kind of highlighted in the IPEC GOAT video, uh, Florida as well. California, Hawaii, various different locations, various different times and dates to look at. Just bring in all the information and just put it there and see if any of it actually works out at all. Um, so I found that very interesting. The Helen, the Troy, um, the possibility of that being like a Trojan horse kind of scenario, a city lost. So, yeah, keep an eye on the Federal Dam, which is currently... Um, undergoing some uh, renovations, I think, if I can use that word, or repairs. Uh, so it's reached its 100-year milestone that was in 2016. So it's 102 years old now. And uh, this report kind of highlights the real problems, not just with like the Hoover Dam or with um, Indian Point nuclear power plant or the Troy Dam um, and the Oconee nuclear power plant and the Kiowi Dam and the Joker, Jokersi Dam, that's it, Jokersi. There's a lot more dams that are aging and possibly in some form of danger. Not all of them are lo located near nuclear power sites, but this report says there will be an abundance of contracting opportunities for companies that provide construction, engineering and environmental services related to dams over the next several years. That's the good news. The bad news is that all these opportunities are resulting from very poor conditions in the country's dams. The majority of dams in the United States are privately owned, with the United States Army Corps of Engineers owning and operating six of the ten largest U.S. reservoirs. Six of the ten largest U.S. embankment dams and 50% of all federally owned dams approximately 95% of the dams managed, managed by the United States Army Corps of Engineers are more than 30 years old and 52% have reached or exceeded the 50-year service life for which they were designed. According to the USAC or USAS, the cost to fix all dams that need repair would be at least $24 billion at the rate of current budget funding that would stretch the process out 50 years or more. According to the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, a series of dam failures in the 1970s resulted in a national focus on inspecting and regulating dams. In 1972, a tailings dam in Buffalo Creek failed and within minutes 125 people were killed and over 3,000 were left homeless. In 1977, the Kelly Barnes Dam in Georgia failed, killing 39 people, most of them college students. The benefits of having dams is to maintain flood control, water storage, irrigation, mine tailings, electrical generation, debris control and navigation. Dams were never intended to be deadly or the creators of destruction. However, if they're not properly maintained or they're purposely, you know, attacked in terms of a terrorist sort of event, then they can become very uh, deadly, obviously. In February, the Oroville Dam Spillway in Northern California was breached due to the faulty design, construction and repair status. The spillway allowed water to seep under its floor and accumulate. Eventually, the pressure lifted a concrete slab into the water flowing down the chute and that initiated a chain of events that largely wrecked the structure. The most critical repairs on the dam are to be completed by November the 1st. More, repair, more repairs are planned for this year. In Southern California, the U US ACE released a report that the 60-year-old Witter Narrow Dam is structurally unsafe, so that's Witter Narrow Dam. Keep an eye on that one as well in California. 
structure now safe, one of the potential problems is that you unusually heavy rains could trigger a premature opening of the dam's massive spillway, causing great risk for communities along the San Gabriel River floodplain. The river and its aquifers serve more than 3 million people in the San Gabriel Valley and southeast Los Angeles County. An estimated 1 million people live and work around the floodplain. Work is expected to begin in 2021 to replace the existing spillway with a system less likely to malfunction. So until then, you've got this system in place that could potentially malfunction. It will always, sorry, it will also shore up the dam's foundation to reduce erosion and prevent subsidence that could result in flood water spilling over the top. So if they're planning to do that work in 2021, then it means at this moment in time, the spillway could malfunction, the dam's foundation is eroding, and uh, there could be potential spilling over the top, which is a common theory along all these dams, spilling over the top, causing erosion, you know, structurally unsafe dams then collapsing and causing mass devastation with all that water they'll release, the flooding, um, and then obviously in situations where you've got nuclear power plants downstream, you've then got to worry about the potential for meltdown happening, releasing contaminants into the atmosphere, or, or in extreme cases, a actual explosion, which I really don't know how big that would be, but considering it's nuclear energy, it would most likely be pretty big. And, and devastating in that way. So in Rock Island County, the large jaw spillway needs structural repairs. The plan is to dewater the lake, rebuild a ledge, and then reinstall the riprap wall, rock, or other material used to arm the shorelines against water erosion. The project also includes upgrades to the Force Coral campsite and the construction of a new RV campsite. The plan calls for 4.5 million in improvements to entice more people to visit the Lao Thunder Forest Preserve. Wright Reservoir on Hurricane Hill in Hartford was drained in 2015 to partially address safety concerns about a potentially catastrophic breach of the dam. The dam once held back 3 million gallons of water that drained from a series of small streams, but now the water has been directed to lower ground by means of a man-made channel. Permanent officials have warned the town must provide for a long-term solution or lose its permit for the dam. The Idaho Water Resource Board expects to make a decision in the next several months on whether to proceed with a proposal uh, sorry, with a proposed new Galloway Dam and Reservoir that would add 700,000 acre feet of storage capacity on the Wiser River system, officially called the Wiser Galloway Project. The dam and reservoir would be built on the Wiser River near its confluence with the Snake River, about 13.5 miles from the city of Wiser. It would have the peak capacity to generate 40 to 60 megawatts of hydropower, which would help pay for the estimated 500 million cost of the project. Now, that report is very detailed, well not extremely detailed, but it gives you an overview of the problems connected to the dams in the United States and how a lot of them are structurally unsafe, whether that's to do with their spillways or overtopping or erosion. Um, so there is the potential for at least one of those dams to, to fail, as has happened in the past. Um, obviously, we expect um, you know people in the right positions, organisations like the US ACE and FEMA and things like that to actually make sure these things are safe. But when you're having to consider that these people are part of um, an, evil an evil cabal intent on bringing about destruction and, and a new world order, you have to consider would they actually tell us or would they just let it happen, you know, or would they even help it happen? So those are the things I consider when making these videos. I'll put them online and just let you guys have a think about them. Um, at least to bring some more scrutiny to the fact that these issues are ongoing um, and there is, at the moment, no immediate plan to fix them. As noted there, the price tag would be somewhere in the $24 billion region um, and at the current rate of repairs, it would take 50 years or more to repair them all, where a lot of them are in, um, you know, they need immediate attention. So... At least I'm looking out for the Jockacy Dam and the Federal Dam or Troy. See what happens there. The Hoover Dam is also something I think about in the back of my mind, but so much attention is on it. So many eyes are on it. I just feel, you know, again, with that whole system of look over here, but we're doing something over here. So, you know, whenever I see something getting a lot of attention, I switch to something else. 
because I feel like, yeah, there's enough people watching that. Something else needs to be watched just in case they try and slip one by us. You guys, have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and may the Heavenly Father bless you.